Time now for our old Sunday talk on a holiday Monday. This week, our panelists will kick around everybody's favorite family dinner debate, politics and religion. The new NDP leader, Jagmeet Singh, has been accused of all sorts of agendas. Fair game, or is there something else going on? Singh doesn't look like your typical party leader. From his sense of style to his turban and kirpan, he has many Canadians talking. We know you're in bed with Sharia. We know you're in bed with the Muslim Brotherhood. His response to the heckler went viral. We welcome you. We love you. We support you and we love you. And in Quebec, where the separation of church and state has taken a strong hold, a different kind of religious challenge. De la gauche religieuse. The leader of the Bloc Québécois called Singh's promotion of religious values unacceptable. Actually, it's not the turban itself. It's what it means. And then last week, this. Do you think that some Canadian Sikhs go too far when they honour Talvinder Singh Parma as a martyr of the Sikh nation, uh, when they put up posters of him? as a shaheed, a martyr. Singh was roundly criticized for refusing to denounce the man seen as the mastermind of the Air India bombing that killed more than 300 people, most of them Canadian. I don't know who was responsible, but I think we need to find out who's truly responsible. We need to make sure that the investigation actually results in a conviction of someone who's actually responsible. I'm joined by our panelists now. Jonathan Kay is an author and freelance columnist. Tasha Carradine is a radio talk show host. And Lincoln Blades is a columnist with Teen Vogue. So for this one, Tasha, I'm going to start with you. So when Jagmeet Singh was elected, the first person of color to be a national leader in this country, uh, lots of celebration, lots of happy people. But then all of these questions about his religion, what do you think? Are the questions fair game hmm. or is he being treated differently? Um, I think that some of them are unfair. The heckler clearly was trying to draw an association between um, his appearance and the Muslim faith, which he is not a Muslim, and she admitted she knew that, I think, based on ignorance of people who might see that video. Um, and, uh, you know, other people in that race, like Charlie Angus, uh, they supported M103, the motion that she says uh, against Islamophobia could allow Sharia law into Canada. So she didn't go target those people. I think it was clearly a target on Singh because of his appearance and the fact people might confuse the two. Um, I think, though, that some of the other things, uh, like Terry Malevsky's criticism, a lot of that also is, I think, looking for issues. And no, he wouldn't be asked that question if he were not a Sikh. Um, the same kind of attacks based on religiosity have been used against conservatives, though, too. So when the and when the Bloc Québécois says this is the rise of the religious left, I think um, that's that's something that we have not seen before. Though I don't see Singh as a particularly religious politician, even though he wears his religion publicly, it does not seem to inform his policies. And I think that's what really should matter at the end of the day. What do you think, Lincoln? Uh, I don't think a lot of these questions have been very fair at all. Uh, when I look at the Terry Maluski, uh, Maluski interview, um, I'm looking at someone who's asking a man who has been facing violent, um, aggressive actions from other people who are looking to attack him xenophobically. They have been coming at him, and I think the problem is that uh, Terry Maluski is looking at him Maluski, and saying... Yep. Maleski, Maleski, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Terry Maleski is looking at him and he's saying, OK, well, can you please comment on something that happened three decades ago mm. and not looking at the actions that have happened in the past five years when we can talk about the 2012 shooting of the six sheikhs in Wisconsin or you can talk about the shootings that happened recently in Kansas and the shooting that happened just this past May in Seattle. Um, I think that there's been an attack on people that look like him and I think that it's important for us to address that and not ask him about things that happened three decades ago after he clearly denounced terrorism. I'm going to bring John in here. What, what do you think, John? Look, I don't know much about the attacks in uh, Wisconsin uh, or Seattle, uh, but I do know that the Air India attack was the greatest terrorist attack in the history of Canada. Uh, this is a man who's running to be Prime Minister of Canada, uh, and it seems fair to ask him about this terrorist attack, especially since uh, Singh himself has been active on issues related to Sikh politics during his career. Uh, when he was an MPP, in fact, he rose in the provincial legislature uh, and suggested that Ontario might use its trade relationship with India in order to seek more lenient treatment for a terrorist who killed 18 people in Punjab, including the chief minister of Punjab. So I don't think these are exactly uh, issues that are not connected to Canada. I think they're fair questions. Terry Malewski himself is an expert on the subject and has done much to educate Canadians about it. And I should point out, by the way, that Canada's reaction 
original reaction to the Air India tragedy was itself denounced as racist because not a lot of people educated themselves about th that tragedy. <laughs> it is alleged because so many of the victims uh, had brown skin. And so now you have a journalist like Terry Malewski who's giving that issue the respect it's due, and he's been doing it for years. He's one of the few Canadian journalists who've done that, and people accuse him of racism. I actually think that's ridiculous. What do you think, Tasha? Or go ahead, Lincoln, you were getting in there. I was going to say that when you look at the recent news peg, if you had to attach his comments, there is absolutely no recent news peg to ask him other than the fact that he's a shake man. Not every when question has to be about a news peg. When you yeah. talk about him, and you talk about what he went through and what made him a viral sensation. It was being accosted by a white woman at a time when white supremacists and white nationalism is a big talking point. It would have been it would have been a better I, question to ask him about his response to that as being a victim instead of asking him in a way that should frame him as some sort of terrorist. I think that, I think that um, there are many questions Terry Molesky could have asked. Asking Singh about the Air India bombing, uh, yes, I agree with John, it was a huge terrorist incident 30 years ago. Um, Singh himself, I think, was six at the time when it happened. Uh, and I think that uh, what he could have asked him, rather, is, is there is an issue about his relationship with India. Singh has been de denied a visa to India because he's spoken out against the Indian government. If you want to be leader of Canada, the relationship between our country and India is an important one. That, to me, would be a more relevant um, line of questioning, if you will, than dealing with the terrorist issue. Both, though, would have to do with the fact that, that Singh um, is of the Sikh faith, and that could cause complications in that relationship. So I, I want to move on to a, to a broader issue here. The, mm -hmm. the, 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 there's this idea of the separation of church and state, John, in, in Canada, uh, and very much pushed back in Quebec for him being so open, wearing all the symbols of his religion. Is he changing something? Is something changing? Should it change? Look, I think Canadians have a somewhat hypocritical attitude about the distinction between uh, church and state. I actually think Canadians are probably less threatened by somebody who's a Sikh or perhaps Jewish or Muslim or Hindu. Uh, usually the opposition to the mixing of church and state, um, on the left side of the spectrum at least, they're very suspicious of Christian conservatives. Mm -hmm. In Quebec, maybe they're a little bit more suspicious, well, a lot more suspicious of, of, of certainly Muslims, uh, Sikhs, minority members. But I think what this is exposing to a certain extent on the Canadian left is that although Canadian left is very suspicious of Christianity, they sometimes give a pass to minority religions. Uh, so, for but instance, you know, Harder gets a, a tough time when she tried to become a chair of the Status of Women Committee uh, because she was a Christian conservative. And then people stare at their shoes when you point out by the standards that the Liberals imposed an observant Muslim or an observant Jew couldn't meet the test that the Liberals imposed I for think, that office. I think one of the reasons that is because with uh, regard to Christian conservatives, and that's a good example of, of the committee, is that there's um, uh, the tension about abortion rights in this country and gay rights in this country and the clash that we've seen at the legal level, at the political level, of religious groups and political groups and different views. And I think that is why the, the, the Christian conservatives have been targeted in this way. And this is what I find interesting here is that um, the left now has this to deal with but again does it inform his politics that is the test to me and I think that is really unless it does unless it's seen to influence directly po policy statements he has on uh, you know variety of economic or personal or social issues then it should not be relevant um, when you are questioning him in the media so Lincoln do you think that this is a test of the supposed separation of uh, of church and state do you, do you see that or, or or do you think that the, this is about racism um, I do think that it has an element of race, and, that, and that's the thing about conservatives. So I don't think Stephen Harper is a good example of, like, the opposite extreme of what's happening with him. Um, when you look at what's going on with Jagmeet, I think what should be brought to forth uh, is the fact that he is being looked at differently because he is a different face. He is the first person of color to lead a major party in Canada. And it doesn't matter what face he was, it doesn't matter what color he was, he will be treated differently because there's still a lot of outstanding issues with race xenophobia uh, that we still haven't he, dealt, dealt with in this nation. He also uses that to advantage. I mean, it was the same thing with Barack Obama. Many people said, you know, there are issues, but at the same time, it broke a barrier, it broke a mold that inspired a lot of people. And I think Jagmeet Singh will inspire a lot of people who don't look like him to vote for him because he has broken that mold. So in a sense, you trade off that achievement, um, you will get, unfortunately, the people coming out and, and using it negatively as well, which he will have to deal with. It's not necessarily fair, but I think that that is what is happening here. Lincoln? Yeah, I think that 
So Jagmeet's his campaign is very is going to be very similar to Barack Obama's uh, 07, 08 campaign in the sense that he is going to activate a lot of people by being by being able to bridge a lot of gaps. I don't look at him, and I think a lot of young people who aren't part of these polls, um, I don't think they look at him as an ultra religious figure. I think they look at him as someone who can actually bridge gaps to different communities. So John, I wonder, is there there's been a big demographic change in Canada in the last few years? I mean, maybe. This idea of the of keeping religion out of politics is that is that changing? Well, to a certain extent, I don't think Singh is a good example of that because he seems extremely socially liberal. Mm -hmm. uh, his his views on LGBT issues, for instance, are completely doctrinaire by the standards of the NDP. Uh, you know, he himself he changed his name. I, I believe his original surname was Dhaliwal. He changed it because it had caste overtones. Uh, and, and he wanted to rid himself of that. He seems an, like an extremely socially liberal and, in fact, an electable person. I, I personally find it inspiring. His story is inspiring, as Lincoln said. He has faced a lot of racism, but if he is going to run to be prime minister, he's got to face all sorts of questions, not just the questions about the adversity he's faced, but the, but the questions about his attitudes and his answers to Terry Malewski's questions about the Air India bombing. His uh, suggestion, for instance, that we don't know who the true culprits were, that actually is very disturbing to me. Props on Terry for asking that question, and I'm sorry Singh's answer suggested that he doesn't know what everybody else knows, which is who bombed that airplane. Last quick point to you, Tasha. Yeah, I think that um, he was. I think he was caught off guard by the line of questioning, and I think he could have answered the questions better. Should those questions, though, be the litmus test by which he is judged as the new leader? I don't necessarily think so, and I think that if that is pursued, there will be a backlash in the sense of you're not dealing with the real issues here, which are what is his policy on, you know, decriminalizing all drugs, for example. Uh, that makes me less possession, likely to vote for him. Possession of all drugs. Possession than, of all drugs. Possession. Well, that makes me less likely to vote for him than anything else, including religion. Frankly, one last sentence out of you, Lincoln. We're almost out of time. Let's also realize that he denounced the terrorism. Let's not get into this point where we start ignoring that fact. So much more to talk about on this issue. I'm sure it's not the last time we'll broach this. Thanks so much. Lovely to see you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thanks.